Hi, I've seen a lot of people asking about how they should get started when they're building an arcade cabinet. And this video is basically going to go through some of the things that I think that you should take into consideration when putting together a cabinet. Now, the first thing you want to do is decide which games do I want to play. If you don't know which games you want to play, you are not ready to go any farther because everything that you're going to do with putting together an arcade cabinet is going to be dictated by the games that you want to play. If we go to you know that crap main site and we look at the common theme here, what is it? Over and over again we see these hideous cabinets that have 50 billion buttons on them and you know 20 joysticks on them and you know aircraft carrier control panels because the people that built these things couldn't decide which games they wanted to play they thought that they were going to do it all oh yeah i'm going to make a cabinet that can play everything ever made and it never works because the whole purpose of an arcade cabinet is specialization okay arcade cabinets are built for games you know games aren't built for arcade cabinets so when you put together a cabinet, the thought should be, is this cabinet going to be really good at playing the games that I want to play? You shouldn't be putting together your abomination and then shoehorning games into it. And so that is really, you know, the one common theme, you know, across all of these terrible cabinets. The people that built them couldn't make decisions. They tried to do it all and they ended up doing everything horribly. So that is the first thing that you should do, and it's the best thing that you can do to avoid making mistakes. Really just sit down and make a list of the games that you actually want to play. And when you do this, you should be very critical and very discerning, because I'm telling you, there aren't that many good arcade games. And this is coming from somebody who loves arcade games probably more than almost anybody on the planet. There just aren't that many good games that, that stand up you know, to this kind of scrutiny. Because you're going to want to use at least three criteria when you're deciding, is something worth putting in my cabinet? Now, these are the criteria. Do I want to play this game? And the second criteria is, is this game endlessly replayable? Because there are a lot of fun games that are fun to play through once, and they're completely boring, and you never want to play them again afterwards. I mean, I, I can list... You know, uh, I can come up with a list as long as your arm of beat em ups that are fun to play through once, but you would never want to play, uh, you know, a second time. So replayability is paramount here. Okay, and then, you know, the, the final thing is, does this game actually play well in an arcade cabinet? Now, Super Metroid meets the first two criteria. It's a great game, I want to play it, and I could probably replay that game every six months, you know, no problem. It's replayable, it, it never really gets old. But does it work in an arcade cabinet? Not really. It, it's a couch game. It just wasn't designed for that. So when you take all this into consideration, there are probably less than 200 games that actually belong in any arcade cabinet, because there are so few games that actually meet those criteria. Now. Once you've decided what kind of games you want to play, then it becomes much easier to decide you know, all, what you want to do. Because now you know which controls you'll actually need to play the games that you want to play. And you'll know what kind of monitor that you're going to need to play the games you want to play, and, and so on. Now, this video is going to focus exclusively on CRT solutions just because it's too big of a topic. Talking about the LCD stuff is just a whole separate video. For CRT arcade monitors, the only good option today is Groovy Mame. Now, what is Groovy Mame? Groovy Mame is basically um, a fork of Mame that lets you run games at their native resolution and refresh rate on an arcade monitor. Um, you know, the person who did it uses the nickname Calamity on the forums, and I just want to kind of give him the credit that he deserves and just point out that this guy really is the patron saint of CRT, uh, you know, monitor arcade cabinets using MAME. I mean, nobody else is doing this. You know, he did the work. He put it together. It's great. And if you look at the forums and look at how long he's been providing support to people for free, you know, when they have any little question about it, it's just really amazing, you know, you know, how much patience 
and passion this guy has, you know, for this hobby. He really loves, uh, you know, CRT monitors. He really loves arcade games. And when you compare him, you know, to some of the other, um, you know, opportunists out there who are trying to make money off of hyperspin videos and hyperspin themes that they didn't make and hyperspin hard drives and all that stuff, it really is a stark contrast that shows you who's important to this hobby and who isn't. You know, I really strongly discourage you from giving uh, any of these, you know, scumbags money who are trying to, you know, sell other people's work and sell other people's passion when there are people like Calamity and the developers of MAME who are just doing it all for the love of it, doing it all for free and just giving it away. You know, these are really bright, uh, passionate people who are just giving it all away because they love the stuff. And it's really insulting and disgusting when you think about it that, you know, other people are trying to nickel and dime you and, and make money off of this stuff when the, when the people who are actually important to it are doing it all for free. Okay, so Groovy Mame lets you do that. Now, now you might wonder, okay, why is it important to run games at their native resolution and refresh rate? Well, let me just give you an example here. I'll run R-Type in Mame. Now, isn't this interesting? R-Type runs at 55 hertz. Now, you know, an LCD is typically typically going to run at 60 hertz or 120 hertz, 20 hertz or 144 hertz. You know, an NTSC uh, television is going to run at around you know 59 hertz or so. But but the point is is that basically every game almost runs at a different refresh rate. They all run at you know different refresh rates. And when you try to force games to run at foreign refresh rates, you know, you know, you know, refresh rates that aren't native to the games, you're going to have two different things, uh, you know, happen. So if you just run it 50 or 60 hertz and you run a game like R-Type, you're going to get stuttering because, you know, every time it has to synchronize, you know, you, you know, you, the, the screen and it's running at the wrong speed, it's going to stutter, you know, to make up for that. And you can force games to run 60 hertz. But that is also a terrible solution because um, the games are going to run too fast and the games are going to sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks because they're going to be running you know, way too fast. It is not a good solution. And so Groovy Mame solves this problem. So basically, Groovy Mame is what you want to look at. Um, you do not want to go with solutions like Arcade VGA because they're actually not as flexible as Groovy Mame. They don't give you as many refresh rates and resolutions, whereas Groovy Mame really will pretty much handle everything. And actually, Groovy Mame is even cheaper too. So here's a typical setup. Um, you know, say you buy a JAMA arcade cabinet and you want to you know put a main box in there. So what am I going to do? So here's what you're going to do. You want to get a JPack. And this is Ultimark's um, device that essentially lets you convert a computer into a JAMA device. So what you'll do is you'll plug your PC video card into the VGA port on this, and you'll plug in you know, this JPack into the JAMA harness in your arcade cabinet, and you'll wire up your you know, kick buttons or you know, additional buttons you know, into um, you know the device here and and that basically lets you treat your uh, JAMA cabinet um, or rather your computer like a JAMA device you know so you can just you can basically use a JAMA arcade cabinet without really destroying anything I mean you could even hot swap this stuff you know you can hot swap JAMA devices you know back and forth between you know a PC and um, you know a real arcade board and so it's a nice solution now, you need a specific type of video card for, that, for this, and this is going to be an HD 4000 series video card. These are really easy to get. They're pretty cheap. If you go on eBay and you do a search for, say, like an HD 4890 uh, video card, you'll see a bunch of them on there. There you go. Um, here's one that you can get for, you know, 50 bucks. I've seen them on there for less than that. And, yeah, here you go. Here's one for $40. And... Uh, this is the fastest card that you can get that still works with Groovy Main. This is the fastest 4000 series card, I think. It has one uh, gigabyte uh, worth of RAM. And you'll pretty much want a card like this if you're going to be doing things like running a 3D game such as Street Fighter 4 on your cabinet. Because even if you have a standard resolution CRT arcade monitor, you can still run Street Fighter 4 
at 640 by 480 interlaced on it, and so you can still do that. So, you know, given that they're only 40 bucks, you might as well get the fastest one you can get. I mean, you can really kind of nickel and dime this though. I mean, you could get like a you know 40 4300 series AMD card and probably spend even less. You could probably do it for like you know 15 15 bucks, maybe even 10 bucks. But I mean, but the bottom line is this is cheaper than Arcade VGA, and Whereas Arcade VGA only gives you a fixed number of resolutions and refresh rates, Groovy Mame is pretty much going to handle everything. So that is what you want to do for the video card. Um, for the software on Groovy Mame, essentially what you're doing is you're installing a hacked version of the AMD drivers that let you manipulate their registry to run at different resolutions and refresh rates. That's pretty much you know what, what Groovy Mame does. The other nice thing about Groovy Mame is that uh, it has the uh, high score patch included in it. It has uh, a nag screen removal patch included in it, so you can get rid of those you know horrible main nag screens uh, in it automatically. And you know you can have a pretty good setup right there. Now, when you do a setup like this, though, you know like I said, you know this all goes back to deciding on which games you want to play. You know, if you're going to do a setup like this, it isn't going to work that well for 16.9 only games that run high resolutions. Like, for example, the new Mortal Kombat games do not run uh, at 4.3 natively. Street Fighter 4 does. Uh, and so that means that the new Mortal Kombat games would be letterboxed on a 4.3 uh, display. And letterboxing 4.3, there is not a lot of resolution left there. That's going to look pretty hideous. So, once again, which games do you want to play? That should dictate all of your decisions here. Now you could get a TriSync, you know, arcade monitor, and um, you know that will let you go up to you know maybe 800 by 600, give you a little bit more flexibility on the resolution. However, uh, depending on which monitor you go with, there you're going to get wildly different results. Like for example, the uh, you know way uh, MacVision monitors are pretty much the only new ones you can buy today you know like if you want a brand new one off the shelf this is pretty much it but I can tell you that these monitors are more or less but I mean they have a pretty soft picture if you run them at 800 by 600 the corners of them are really um, soft and blurry they're just not really good displays um, you know they're, they're nowhere near as good as in the now or um, you know Wells Gardner arcade monitor they're just not you know that kind of quality so I would say that if you really want to do this right you want something like a Wells Gardner you know 7000 series monitor or you know like a candy cabinet with a good uh, Nanao you know tri-sync monitor something like that uh, yeah that's what that's where you're gonna get the good quality there so when it comes to picking a CRT arcade monitor, my recommendations are stay away from standard NTSC televisions because basically with those you're just going to be outputting through you know S video, and you're not going to have any real control over the refresh rate or resolution. You're just going to get you know a crappy 640 by 40 interlaced image. You're not going to be able to choose the refresh rate. So you know S video is is terrible. It, it will look nothing like a real arcade monitor. Um, you know the, the Mac Vision way of stuff. I mean, it'll work, but it, it's not going to look authentic. It's not going to look exactly like you remember the games looking. And so, there's no beating the real thing, right? Um, if you get just a JAMA cabinet with, uh, you know, like a good Wells Gardner screen, it, it is basically going to look exactly the same as the games looked in the arcades with a with a Groovy Mame setup. So it's a really nice option for that. Um, if you are really picky about motion quality in games. Um, in other words, if you hate motion blur, can't handle motion blur, and don't really care about playing high resolution games, it is a no-brainer. You know, this it, this is the best setup. Don't even think about it. Um, and, and like I said, it's cheaper than some of the other options too. You know, it's cheaper than Arcade VGA. You can get some of these AMD cards for like 15 bucks. You know, th there's so many refurbished, uh, you know, AMD cards that were pulled out of you know, like Dell workstations that they're selling on eBay. It's very easy to get these things. So that's what you want to do. Now, you can check, you know, the, uh, you know, the details and, you know, comments maybe in this video. And I'm going to provide some links to, you know, the Groovy Main forums 
and you can go there and get everything you're going to need to get going on a setup like this. But, but I mean, but, but that is really your starting point. Decide which games you want to play, what you want to do before you do anything else, and then at that point you'll be able to make the decision. Do I want a CRT? Do I want an LCD? You know, what do I want to do? Because if you have one of these stupid setups where you have 50,000 games on it and you have you know, 50,000 videos and you're navigating through menus, you're wasting more time going through dumb menus than you are even playing games. You know, it's stupid. It really is. And, and, and really, I mean, even though I realize this is going to come off as you know, kind of insulting and all that, but really, I mean, if, if we're honest with ourselves here, the people putting together you know, you know, those goofy hyperspin setups with, you know, the uh, aircraft carrier control panels and are, you know, putting videos on YouTube and showing off. Basically, that's what these people are doing. They're just showing off. They don't even like arcade games. You know, the whole thing is basically just a way for them to wave their wiener around. It's ridiculous. So, think about it. Which games do you want to play? What do you want to do? Um, and then when you make that decision, you can decide, you know, which way you want to go here. But if you're going to go with the CRT option, stay away from just, you know, off-the-shelf, uh, you know, NTSC televisions. You know, get a real arcade monitor. Or, or even just, you know, get, get one that's been tube-swapped. You know, you can get, you know, an uh, arcade monitor chassis that's been, you know, you know connected to, a, a, you know, a, a normal television tube. And, I mean, that's okay, too. But, but basically, you want an arcade chassis there. You know, you don't want some... You know, you know, crappy, soft S video image for this. Yeah, like I said, if you're going to do that, who cares, right? You might as well just go for an LCD. I mean, at that point, you, you don't care about quality anyway, right? So that is, uh, you know, just, just a brief overview of, you know, what you want to do, you know, when putting together one of these arcade cabinets. I'm going to put together some other videos that go into the nitty-gritty details of this, but, but I just want this reference to be out there. So if you are wanting to build an arcade cabinet, um, that is the first thing, okay? Decide which games you want to play, okay? And remember that arcade cabinets are made for games, okay? Games aren't uh, made for arcade cabinets. You know, an arcade cabinet is a way for you to play a game in the best way possible. You know, it isn't a generic solution. It's a specialized solution. You know, it's a dedicated solution, you, you know, tailored you know, to make these things play as well as possible. It's all about the games, okay? That should be the perspective that you're coming from here. Everything is about the games. And that means that when it comes to things like front ends and all of that, you want to choose one that isn't going to get in the way of playing games. Um, you, you know, uh, one last thing I'll say is that I strongly discourage using hyperspin as your front end just because it's been proven to interfere with the behavior of MAME and groovy MAME. And so it fails the basic test when it comes to a front end. Um, you want something that's going to play your games without interfering. You want something that doesn't compromise the quality of the games that you play. So stay away from that one. Uh, there are a lot of good options for front ends. Hyperspin isn't really one of them. And even though you might see a lot of flashy setups and think that it looks neat and all that, at the end of the day it's going to get old and uh, it's gonna be more cumbersome and more of a nuisance than just a simple front end that you can navigate and just start your games quickly. And so that is the point I wanna hammer home here. You know, This isn't about being a flashy show off, it's about playing games well and coming up with an elegant, you know, you know, tasteful, beautiful solution. So keep all that in mind, look at the Groovy Mame forums, and, uh, you know, check out, uh, you know, those AMD video cards. I mean, actually, it might be a good idea to start snatching some of these up because now that the word's kind of out on this, I'm sure we are going to hit the point where it becomes difficult to get these cards and they're probably going to, you know, start to, you know, raise in value. So just think about all that. I'll be poking around on, you know, Reddit and Arcade Controls forums, you know, to answer more questions on this. But I just did this video because... I was sick of typing out the same thing over and over and over again.